is relating to somebody's request to have a look at Susie Cruz's video relating to going to Morocco for two days. And she did do well there, let's be honest. Um, first thing I want to say is she did no research on Morocco. Um, you could tell that by not recognizing that guys go, um, it's all over TripAdvisor. Yet she had some sort of meltdown with these guys making this noise and women looking at it. It's normal in Morocco, you s woman. Um, and she was saying, well, I dress conservatively. I have these. Uh, la, 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 la. Um, yeah. They still do it anyway. You're a foreigner. Grow up. Be an adult. Um, that stuff goes on. And sitting there saying, I'm not allowed to be myself. I had to be this other person. My God. Have you ever... I'm sure somebody baited me to have a look at this today. I'm sure they did, because she's the sort of woman I would I despise. Um, I would hazard a guess that her funding um, probably comes from family. That's, that's one of the things I will say, just by the way she is. She does seem a bit of a spoiled child and has this um, bubble environment where everything's awesome. I mean, her video, I watched a couple just to get a feel for what she does. She travels around in a van, goes surfing, and all this sort of stuff. She seems to have a quite a good income for a YouTube channel, let's put it that way. So I'd hazard a guess somebody's supporting her financially. Um, so from that, I would hazard a guess that somebody is financially uh, supported her through her entire life. So this sort of stuff for her is completely out of her bubble, but she has this um, version of travel that is sort of unreal. Um, but anyway, so what happened is she, she had these guys going, had some sort of meltdown in this area, because she actually videoed a bit where she sat there all like freaking out. Met this Moroccan guy um, that works for a tour operator, uh, according to herself, because it's actually in her uh, description of the video. She goes with him and he makes her tea, they stay there all day, she eats there, everything else. And then he takes her to a, a spot where she park her van at night and he agrees to stay outside the van. She, he also talks to the people next door and has a chat with them and asks for a cigarette and all this sort of stuff. At the same time, she's acting like he's taking her out into the woods to kill her and do sexual things to her. That's not what guys do when they take you to a campsite and sit and chat with the people next door and everything else. Um, because if you are a feminist, it's obviously guys do this anyway. So, um, But the guy was obviously trying to help you um, because you, you'd obviously seen the state you're in. It's on, on your video. You were freaking out because the noises people were making in during the day even. It's not even in the evening. <laughs> it's broad daylight. Um, but then... He sort of like tried to carve you down, took you for tea, da, 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 and then took you to the campsite. And then he's like, well, I'll stay outside and make sure you're okay. And then you're like, you don't want to stop there now. So you go back on the way back to his house. You go to, um, he wants to get some cigarettes on the way home. You make this thing up. And the, the thing I want to say about the video stuff is, in my personal opinion, Firstly, it's all slanted anyway, because it's, it's justifying what she's done. At no point does she take any responsibility that she's an idiot. She went to a country completely unprepared. Um, she lost her money, lost her purse, and I doubt the guys took her purse, because even pickpockets do not take it. Um, in the sense that the first thing anybody will do there, the same as they do it here in Torrebeca in Spain, is they dump the purse, the wallet, or whatever. They just want cash. They, I mean, in Spain especially, you won't get arrested unless you've got 400 euros on you as a pickpocket. Um, they will dump the purse because the purse has your ID and bank cards that are useless and stuff. They do not want them. So I would hazard a guess you've lost your purse somewhere else, but very easy to blame the guy for it. Um, was he sexually harassing you? I think you just broaden the story up because you've sat in a van and built this up over time. So, in my personal opinion, I can't trust half the stuff you said. But I do look at things logically, and the fact is, the guy went to the people next door at this campsite, 
So he's already got multiple witnesses that was there. That doesn't make him the sort of guy that would be committing some something a bit suspect. You videoed him as well, and he obviously knew you'd videoed him. There's another thing. Later on, when he went to the cigarettes, and then you tried to dump him at the side of the road somewhere, he exchanged a phone number with somebody else, as you said yourself. That's not the act of somebody that's a bit strange. <laughs> but, um, but you tried to dump him at the road, and then complained that he he demanded some money. Well, he asked you for money. He didn't demand, did he? He asked you for some money. Because, like he said, you'd spent all day at his house, and now you're dumping him at the side of the road. Because you didn't mention the bit you're dumping him at the side of the road. You mentioned the fact he'd asked you money as if you owed him money for the helping you all day, etc. I think you probably forgot to mention the reason he was saying you need to pay for his taxi is because he's helped you all day and you're leaving him at the side of the bloody road. Why the hell would I, you know, if you did the same to me, I'll be honest with you. You come to my house all destroyed, whatever, got you chilled out, helped you get on your way, and then halfway up the, you know, I'll, just, I'll take you up here, blah, blah, blah. And then you go, right. Uh, there's no bus of that here, but uh, goodbye. Uh, hang on a minute. I've come out of my daily routine to sort your mess out, and now you're dumping me at the side of the road where I've got a six-mile track trek back to my house. Now I want a bloody taxi. So that is you. That is not him. And this is why I look at this stuff, and I'm thinking you're just adding bits in here to justify what you have done. I do not trust a word you've said. Um, because of the way you've done it. Because it's very obvious that when you look at this from a disconnected view, the guy was not trying to do anything. The bit where they stay outside your camper van or whatever is the same I get in the Philippines. Because if you go with somebody, they take responsibility for you. So they will stay with you to make sure you get on your way. A lot of that is normal in cultures. It doesn't mean the guy was trying to murder or rape you or something else. It means the guy had actually took a bit of responsibility to make sure you got on your way okay. Because you didn't like the campsite and whatever, whose fault is that? Yours. Because you're driving at 3 o'clock in the morning after spending all day at his house instead of getting on your way earlier, whose fault is that? Yours. Because you couldn't research and understand what goes on with people making sound effects in Morocco and got all wound up and frustrated. Whose fault is that? Yours. Going to a, a stranger's house during the day in some side street. Whose fault is that? Yours. Is the guy some strange guy that you've now had arrested for stealing your purse when I doubt he even took your purse, which is another thing. Um, you probably lost your purse somewhere along the way. Um, whose fault is that? it's yours. Being ill prepared for traveling is yours. When you, Here's a bit of advice. When you have traveling country to country, which you are doing, it's not a case of you going on a two-week tour of Spain um, and just hop on a flight home. Separate your money. You do not keep everything in your purse. You're a pretty damn stupid person to do that. Um, what you do, especially since you've got a van, is you separate your cash out. First thing I would recommend is although you've got your bank card, get yourself two prepayment cards as well as an emergency backup. And then you transfer emergency funds on some. Not a lot, maybe a hundred pounds, maybe a two hundred, whatever. And you separate those and you keep them um, as emergency backups. In fact, put your bank card one place, put your second card somewhere and use the prepayment card. At the same time, take cash split your cash out the same way. When I got pickpocketed here in Torreca, because he is a surprise, it happens to everybody. Um, my pickpocket had robbed me at the market here, and they're notorious here. And it, I would actually gone with my pockets buttoned down and everything else, and they were pretty good at it, let's put it that way. But at the same time, there was still money back at the villa I was actually staying in. And the whole point being is, although I had the disruption of having to walk for two hours in, in, in Spanish heat, I got back to the villa and it did not destroy my uh, vacation because I'd separated my money. Yes, I had the disruption of losing um, some official documents, 
but all of that was fixed within two weeks of being back in the UK. But if I was on a longer trip, a lot of those documents wouldn't even have traveled with me. I'll be honest with you. It's just that because it was such a rush trip and I was traveling from where I was, I needed to take everything with me because normally I separate everything out. In your case, you've left your passport and everything in a bag. I, don't, I do not recommend any traveler doing that. If you don't need to carry certain stuff, don't carry it with you. Get a safe box welded into the bottom of your van. I'm sure you've got some pull-out locations. You can put a safe in there, just a small, even just welding a cash box to the bottom of the van under a seat gives you a safe storage space. Um, yeah, so I understand the guy being a bit peeved, being dropped off in the middle of nowhere with no money to get back and in a location he would struggle to get back from. Of course he'd want some taxi fare. You're just rude. <laughs> Um, yeah, the sound of Moroccans, that, that's just normal anyway. You're in somebody else's culture. And the way you said it, I felt I, I couldn't be myself and had to be, had to be some other person. You're in somebody else's country. You respect their culture. This is the problem where a lot of these, um, I mean, somebody did mention being a feminist. This is, this is where I tell feminists to go. Go to these countries, go to, go to Saudi Arabia, go to these other countries, and go and spread your word of feminism and see how well it goes. You couldn't even manage it. I, I would say that's an insecurity complex. Now, yeah, and the final thing was, is when you decide to dump, dump the guy at the side of the road, you needed to get the support of your boyfriend on the phone to make that decision for you. As a traveler, you should be more independent or shouldn't travel alone because you did not handle this situation very well and I don't think there was a situation beyond that that was in your head. Um, the guy obviously works as a tour operator, as you said yourself in your own description. Every location you went with him, he was transferring phone numbers and talking to everybody. That does not sound like somebody that is going to commit some serious crime. They would be trying to be invisible. What it sounds like is somebody could not handle the situation and quite simply allowed things to just spiral out of control. In fact, I'm not being funny. The way you're describing the way you are and when you see yourself on the, um, see yourself in the video, you're distraught through the whole thing. Even then, you've driven back to Spain. You're still distraught. Now, I'm not being funny. If I've been stuck with you all day, and you're in that state, the first concern I've got is, what the hell are you going to do when you leave here? Because you're so wound up and so completely off your head. You're like reading things that aren't there, from what I can see. You seem completely oblivious to any of your responsibility in any of this. And at the same time, I've now made this guy out to be not only a rapist, but a thief of your bag and stuff. Yet, you're searching the van with him, yet he can't find it either. So where did it go? Did you take Paul Daniels on the trip with you? Because I would hazard a guess you've lost your bag earlier in the day. And I'll tell you now, you've probably forgot that you lost your bag earlier in the day because you've been distraught all day. Um... And you're a good example of if somebody is solo traveling, be aware these things do happen. But in most cases, if you prepare yourself, you can combat it. The first thing is, go on TripAdvisor. The noises Moroccan men are making is on TripAdvisor, because that's where your day started. <sighs> Thanks for watching.